Hi, today we're going to be talking about spinner rigs with bait for fishing saltwater uh, inshore. Okay, now the thing is that this is nothing new. I wrote about this more than 20 years ago in Rod and Line magazine here in Malaysia, and it still works. This is not a replacement for any other pre pre uh, presentation out there. Live bait fishing with just a bare hook, a bait, and a sinker still is an effective thing, and it sometimes that's the only thing that works. Jigging, that's still an effective presentation. Sometimes that's the only thing that works. These spinners with bait, they fit right between because you get the flash and the vibration of the spinner like a jig, okay? But you also have the smell and the taste of bait like the bait rig. It's not a best of both, both worlds thing at all. It's not. This is not the end all be all of presentations at all. It's just something different that can work when the fish are in in between mood, okay? When, when, when regular presentations aren't working, this one can scratch a few extra fish, okay? And now there's some things I picked up along the way uh, to help make this more effective for uh, the targets that I'm going for. Now, I'm going in about a week or so uh, to uh, the Straits of Malacca and to uh, near Sepang, okay? And I am not sure what type of fish I'm going to be going for. So the, my wire selection is gonna be different than normal. Normally, uh, if I'm going to Port Klang and such, I just grab, because uh, uh, I'm fishing ultra, I'm fishing four pound uh, braid, okay? Then I just grab this 10 pound wire, four pound braid, 10 pound wire. In this case, I'm going a little bit heavier because I'm not sure what I'm running into. So 20 pound, this is 20 pound uh, carbon coated, okay? Uh, if you hold them side by side, I don't think the camera can pick this up, but the 20 pound is uh, significantly thicker, but it is, uh, this carbon coat is a, has a lesser coating. So when we burn it, when, uh, when we melt it, you, you're gonna notice I'm just touching the flame to it. I'm not gonna hold it under for a while like I would with 60 or 80 pound, you know, nylon coated where you have a lot of nylon diffused together. This is just like this, okay? So we're starting with a long piece, about a foot. And we want to make an eye for us to tie the monofilament leader to, whereby the, we, we don't want a loop of wire to a nylon uh, leader because under pressure that wire will cut through the, the nylon, the monofilament leader, okay? So what I do is I double this with um, a Flemish eye, okay? Let me show you what I'm talking about. I take this, okay? I make an overhand knot and I tighten it down a decent amount, okay? At a certain point, the wire will rebel. It just won't go any smaller unless you really crank on it and make it into a solid, you know, tiny little knot where you can't fit anything into it, okay? So that's about as small as it's gonna go. Now, I'm gonna go through that loop one more time Okay. And at this point, I can start to manipulate the size of the knot a little bit more. Squeeze my fingers here, drive it up, reduce one loop, pull the other one tight. Okay. Now, once it's at the size you want, okay, to prevent it from going anywhere, melt it. Okay. Where did my. Okay. So. I'm just gonna take this, I'm gonna to touch the, the fire to it. That's it. Okay, smoke came off and it, it all became fused. Now I need to tie off the tag. Make sure this isn't going anywhere, okay? So all I'm gonna do is mainline, knot, tag. I'm just gonna take this and make a, a, a finishing knot, uh, yeah? So all this, I'm gonna tie it around here and just go through that loop three times, okay? So mainline, tag, take the tag, come around the mainline, this loop, go around the mainline three times. One, two, three. Okay. Gently pull this down. This is where the vise comes in handy a little bit, the fly tying vise. Just don't, don't, not too tight. You just 
want to hold on to the to the to the Flemish eye okay at a certain point yeah you're you're, you're, you're you'll feel that the the wire is gripping itself a lot and it doesn't want to pull down if, if you did anything else you would start to worry about the about the wire a little bit you might end up breaking it so at that point you just stop just stop burn it in place okay just touch there you can see it, it already reacted that's it it's all you need to do and then clip the tag in that's it this isn't going anywhere now okay you got a nice tie-in point i can clip that tag a little bit a little bit cleaner Okay, now let's let's assemble the spinner. Okay, you always want a protector bead. I had a tiny little three millimeter bead that I use as a protector bead to catch any weeds or other debris. Okay, then I put on the spinner with a clevis to help it go freely. I use a folded clevis. I don't use the stamped one. Okay, folded clevis means it, it, it's it's like a piece of metal folded okay you can see here i'll hold it you can see it's folded like that okay i'll show you a stamped one in just a second let me get this through okay a stamped one is like this let me hold the pliers so you can see it okay it's not folded at all you can see there's a flat edge flat edge this is just solid metal and it's drilled through that drilled hole there, um, it, that can destroy monofilament, okay? I've had it destroy monofilament. Um, maybe it was a cheap clevis or something like that, but rather than risk that again, I just go with the folded ones, okay? Now you need a bead for it all to rotate on. This is a plastic bead. It looks metallic. It's color coated metallic, but it's actually a plastic bead. And you can see where the chrome is coming off on it because I used this many times. And uh, it's, well, <laughs> it's plastic, okay? Now, rig float. These normally, we use these in freshwater fishing for like walleyes and stuff like that. They work great in salt water too, okay? Uh, they last a little longer if you coat them with uh, epoxy or, or a finish of some sort, but this, it's, <laughs> I'm probably gonna be cutting this all apart after the trip anyway, okay? Now, the last thing, little soft glow beads now why do these things work i'm not sure exactly why they work i know that they work actually i'm going to go with a smaller one for this okay and i do know that uh under low light the eyes of prawns look exactly like these glow beads okay when you shine a light on in, in low light times the eyes light up just like these glow beads so, uh, and it doesn't matter whether it's a mantis prawn or a tiger prawn or regular inshore prawn, whatever prawn, these look like, just like their eyes. I don't know causation or, or, or versus uh, result, but I do know in areas with prawns, when we use these, we catch more fish. Uh, areas without prawns, we use these, it doesn't seem to matter. So it, it seems anywhere, anytime we're around prawns that are being eaten by fish, these little glow beads work. So on it goes. If it works for the fish, uh, I'm putting it on, okay? Now next, hooks. I'm using tiny hooks. These are, I believe, size seven or size nine chino hooks, okay? I'm gonna thread this on, and then I'm gonna pop the hook into the vise just to make tying this easier. These tiny hooks, uh, yeah, the vise really helps to be that third hand, okay? Pull it somewhere, some, just flush to the bead and begin to snell. I'm gonna start the loop there. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Keep the pressure. Line through the loop. There's the tag. Pull that through, grab up here. 
Okay, I gotta grab my Flemish eye up here. Pull this, and you don't have to pull it ultra tight because uh, you're gonna melt this, okay? And that'll hold really well once you melt it. Now get a second hook, and I'm not gonna go that big because I'm not using a big piece of bait. I don't plan on it, at least. Okay. So I'm gonna put this basically right up against this other hook, because I'm gonna end up, you know, pulling something out anyway. Yeah, that's about the distance I want for now. It's gonna get a lot longer once I pull up the loop. Okay. That first wrap is always the most difficult. Two, three, four, five, six. Oop. Seven. Keep the tension, go through the loop. Okay, grab the Flemish eye. Slowly work it back and forth till it cinches down. Okay, that's it. Now we're gonna burn these in place. Okay, uh, I'm gonna clip off the tag first because I've cinched this down enough. I'm confident in it. Okay. Okay, use my bobbin cradle. Uh, make this a little bit farther out for now. Okay, and here we go. Just touch it. There, that's it. You see the smoke, you're done. Okay, I'm gonna go to the first hook. You can see the color on the wire changed already. That's when you know it's successful. Bring this in a little bit. Rotate. Okay. Oh, a little bit more. There we go. Take this away. Just a bit. That's it. Okay. That's it. She's not going anywhere. That's nice and secure. Okay. Now, if you really want, you're worried about, you know, fingerprints on the blade and everything, you can go clean it off if you want to. Um, I know from experience, I don't have a lot of oils on my fingers. I, I'm OCD about that, uh, but I still will go wash this off, okay? I highly recommend that uh, because fish in, in this type of rig, they are gonna get up close and smell the bait, okay? I hope this helps. I hope this answers some questions and gives you guys some ideas for new directions in, uh, in fishing for, for inshore fish that are finicky, okay? Cheers.